this lesson, we will discuss advanced object properties. Let's begin with the properties we get with most objects in the game. Hit the up arrow on the D-pad to open the objects menu. Once you select an object, hit X to spawn it into the game world. Hit up on the D-pad to open the properties for that object. The first thing we see is variations for the object, if that object has variations. Scroll left or right to select the variation you wish to use. Next we have a few checkboxes. Most of these are self-explanatory. Visibility determines if the object is visible or not. Next is physics. Check this box if you want the object to have the ability to move and react to outside forces around it, more or less like an object would in the real world. For instance, gravity. Lock to driving line is next. This option does exactly what it says. The object will try to stay on the driving line. Keep in mind, you will also need to have dynamic physics turned on for this to have any effect on the object. Next, we have decal target category. We will get more into decals in a later tutorial. But for now, know that this option is more or less where you set if a decal will display or not display on this object. Next, we have advanced settings. In this menu, we have a few more options. First, we have texture cache. Selecting this option tells the game to render the texture on the object at the start of the track, as opposed to rendering it in the culling range, which takes us to our next option, culling range enabled. Here is where you can set the view distance in meters for this object. The higher the number, the further away you will be able to see it, and the lower the number, the closer you have to be to the object for it to show up. Hitting square will reset the object's default value. Okay, let's hit circle and jump back out of this menu. Our next option is advanced physics. Now in this menu is where we have way more control over the physics of the object. If the object is breakable, the first option we have in this menu will be hit points. If the object is not breakable, this option will not be here. This number determines the amount of damage an object can take before it breaks. A high number will be hard to break. A lower number will take less punishment. The next item is mass. This determines how much an object weighs. The higher the number, the heavier it is. Next is friction. This number sets how much resistance the surface of an object has to other objects when it comes in contact with them. For instance, if we set this number to zero, any object that comes in contact with that object will slide across it as if it were ice. Next is linear damping. This setting will slow an object's linear movement. At 0%, the object will react normally. At 50%, the object will move somewhat slower. And at 100%, the object will strongly resist any linear movement. Angular damping does the same thing but with angular motion, or spin. At 0%, the object will react normally. At 50%, it will spin more slowly. And at 100%, the object will resist spinning at all. Our next checkbox is Disable Global Damping. This simulates the world forces that would slow an object's movement, like friction caused by moving through the air. Checking this box disables this force, giving the object more freedom of movement. Restitution sets how much bounce an object has. Zero is no bounce, 100 is max bounce. Buoyancy determines how much the object will float in water. Zero will go straight to the bottom, and the max setting of 1000 will resist entering the water at all, and will bounce around on the water's surface. Disable World Gravity does exactly that. It removes the effects of world gravity on the object, allowing it to float around as if it were in space. If you select this option, then you are able to set a custom gravity on that object. A negative number will pull the object down, and a positive number will pull the object up. Next, we have Physics Type. This has a few different settings. Default means the object will behave normally, meaning the rider will be able to ride on the object. Contact response means the object will have collision even if it's invisible. Normally, the rider will ride through an invisible object like it's not even there. No contact response means the object will not have any collision even when visible, but can still be used as a hit trigger, which we'll cover a little later when we get into triggers and events. Finally, decoration only means the object has no type of collision at all you would want to use this setting on objects the rider is not going to be riding on. You could also use this to improve performance if you have a lot of decoration objects that could be slowing the frame rate of your track. Next is Collision Sound. This option determines if a sound would be played when the bike, rider, or another object comes in contact with this object. The Use Custom Collision Sound option will bring up a slider where you can pick the custom collision sound for the object. Use Custom Collision Materials is next. This option allows you to select a material that would be kicked up when the bike or rider comes in contact with the object. Next is Fast Object. This option will prevent fast moving objects from going through other objects, but keep in mind this setting can affect track performance. Finally, we have Reset Position at Checkpoint Restart. This would be used if you animated an object or an object moved with dynamic physics during gameplay. 
This option checked means the object starts at its original position when the player resets a checkpoint. Unchecked means the object will stay where it was moved to. Now we can back out to the previous menu. Next, if the object can be colored, is material. Here is where you can change the color of the object. This brings up the color picker so you can pick whatever color you want. Right and left triggers move through the color wheel hues and the left stick moves the color picker through the saturations and lightness and darknesses. Next is size. Here is where you can scale the object up or down by a numeric value. Remember, you can hit square to reset the default value in most settings. Next we have layer. Here is where you can change the layer an object is on. And finally, we have save to favorites, which allows you to save this object to your favorites. You would usually want to save a custom object you create to favorites, rather than saving objects you can find normally in the objects list. We will talk more about favorites in the lesson gluing, grouping, and favorites.